name is Kim Norton. I've had the great honor of serving the people of Rochester in this magnificent chamber over the last four years. As individuals, we make statements about who we are, our values, our aspirations, in the clothes we wear, the homes we live in, the cars we drive. As a people, we make statements about who we are through our public architecture. I remember well the first time I visited the Minnesota State Capitol. I was awed by its grace and beauty. The first thing I noticed was the imposing and brilliant facade. The architect who won the competition insisted on Georgia marble instead of the darker granite from St. Cloud. That is why we have this brilliant and commanding presence sitting atop one of St. Paul's tallest hills. Next came the graceful grand staircases located at either end of the building that transport a visitor to the second floor where you'll find the House, the Senate, and the Supreme Court chambers. Minnesota's capital was designed by a world-renowned architect who established his reputation with his design and then went on to design a series of monumental buildings, including the U.S. Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. That architect was Cass Gilbert, born in Ohio in 1859 and raised in St. Paul. The movers and shakers of the late 1890s knew that good architecture should speak not only to its time and place, but also have a timeless quality in order to speak to the future. Many people don't know that this building is actually Minnesota's third state capital. The first was built in 1853 at 10th and Cedar Street in St. Paul, when Minnesota was still a territory. It was destroyed by fire in 1881. That building was replaced two years later by a somewhat ugly red brick Victorian structure that pleased no one. Minnesota's second capital was something of a disaster from the start. It was too small and it had serious problems with air circulation. Here is a picture of the house chamber in that building. I can tell you, given a choice, I would much prefer serving in this chamber. State leaders realized within a decade that a new capital was needed. Soon the Minnesota legislature passed a bill which started the lengthy process of creating yet another new capital. With the eye on the future, the legislature created the Board of State Capital Commissioners, comprised of remarkably far-seeing civic leaders and led by a St. Paul businessman named Channing Seabury. The board guided the project through every phase of construction, as well as surviving six legislative sessions, five governors, several controversies, cost overruns, and managing lots of contractors. Approximately 40 designs for this building were submitted to the board. In the end, the board selected Cass Gilbert's design. I should mention that the architect's insistence on the white marble from the southern state of Georgia for the exterior set off an ugly controversy. Owners of the granite quarries in St. Cloud mobilized opposition, and it is not hard to imagine that, that many Civil War veterans who had only 30 years earlier been engaged in a bloody struggle in the South were not pleased. Gilbert was only 35 years old when he won the competition for the best design. The Capitol took nine years to build, and the building ultimately cost the taxpayers $4.5 million. That doesn't sound like much money today, but believe me, that was a big commitment 100 years ago when the country was in the midst of an economic crisis called the Panic of 1893. I would like to close by taking you on a brief tour of one of the most interesting and little known features of the state capitol. <laughs> Just, just so that, so that you get an idea of what we're doing. If you stood back at that rail, you could look up over the top there and you could see the chandelier. So we're going to go like pretty much... Up. Higher than the chandelier. Hold on. That's the edge of the news. <laughs> and the reason I told you about the chandelier is it's right there. Do we have to walk all the way around it, John? <laughs> I mean, do we have to get to that door? No. This is far enough right here because I really don't like looking down there. <laughs> You're having a little. It's just the fact that this is a whatever a catwalk or whatever. That's what's getting in the way. And, and if you walk around it, you get the the, the, the metal actually creaks a lot. I can see really it's separated that. to my left, and I really yeah. don't want to walk on the separated <laughs> metal. <laughs> I live in Rochester most of the time, but when I'm up here at work, then I live in St. Paul, just okay. where that big cathedral was. Oh. What do they use these for, John? Come on. Oh, that's They're replacements. For balustrades. How many 
upstairs? 72. 72. Okay, that's documented? 72. That's the official? <laughs> yes. What do you think of that gargoyle over there? Yeah, it's guarding well, as you, well. John. How about this guy over here? <laughs> I got it. All right. Are you? Sure. I got key grip working for me here. I'm going to find All right. Right you uh, grab the light. From the outside, it appears to have only a single dome. But in truth, there are three domes. I'm going to show you how complicated the dome design of the Capitol really is. And as an added bonus, I'm going to give you a rare view of the St. Paul skyline from a very interesting vantage point. see on the outside of the building all the granite? Look on the inside, though. It's two different domes, okay? Now, if you look right here, you can see out. You see another wall? Yeah. Aha, another dome. Okay. That's the actual outside part, the other side of that wall. This is just a dome with this kind of ground. This is wonderful. Wow, look at that. Ooh. I'm a little nervous, John. I see my car. Okay. Matt goes up to you. Look how the, the golden the gold ball. ball really? is right up there. You can see the gold edge. <laughs> no, that's no, that's a, this is as close as I get. Look at this. Hi, everybody. This is the same design as the U.S. Capitol. If you look at pictures from a the distance, they look mm -hmm. the same. Okay, Dad, Mom, you go. Mom, you go. With the Chaska brick. With the Chaska brick. Okay. And that's all that holds it up. All right. I don't want to go on that. No. Just to the horses. Sure, Kim. I've been very brave so far, John. Yeah, you've been you've been a real girl. Come on. You're fine. So where's Cass Gilbert's signature? Uh, it's the building itself. It's Are you calling them? You know? No. Okay, so is this like a crack in the wall that we're fixing? That makes me nervous. Yeah. So somebody comes and rechecks these things periodically. And... Once every hundred years. Yeah. Yeah, these are the replacements. Yeah. This building, with all its dignity and majesty, sets a standard of excellence that should be reflected in the work we do here.